The murder of George Floyd sparked a movement, a movement largely based on police reform and equality. Change doesn't happen overnight. It, it's a, sometimes it's a slow evolving process. And I think that there is a process of change in which the pieces are being put into place. Derek Chauvin's conviction may have been a sign of those wheels in motion. We've been hoping that we would be heard. And so it did my heart good to see that finally, finally somebody was being held accountable. I had to stop myself from like sobbing because it was just like this emotional weight that I knew was there. I hadn't allowed myself to even hope that he would be convicted. You know, I just truly believed he would get off because I think, you know, being a young black man in this country, so often I see justice denied when it comes to these type of situations. We literally all saw this happen and, you know, we all agreed about how horrible and egregious it was. But in the process, last year's protests brought different communities and people from all different backgrounds together. Once you have an ally come forth and be like, hey, y'all, listen to me. I know for a fact that this is what happened, here's the evidence, you'll be more willing to listen to that person because that's not even their fight. You guys want the same thing that all of us want for our families, for, for our children and things like that. So we found an overwhelming amount of support that wasn't there before just simply because people's eyes weren't open. We might be able to identify with somebody through an experience. Maybe we were profiled. That experience can link us on an emotional level. The past year also had an effect on how we discuss race in our country, conversations that are uncomfortable but connect all of us. There's a sense of unfortunate gratitude in it bringing us here today and us being able to have these conversations that we've had and just to see, um, you know, where America is and how people, you know, really feel when it comes to talks of humanity. I think it raised awareness and you can't make any change until people first admit that there's something wrong. It's just the ugly truth that a lot of people didn't want to deal with. I think we have a history of racism in our nation. Um, it doesn't mean that that has to be our future, but we have a history in which race has had an impact on people's ability to build wealth. It's had an impact on people's ability to live, to experience the American dream. George Floyd's death and the protests that followed were covered by media outlets around the world. It was a crucial moment for journalism. Here at KSAT 12, it brought about new conversations, different conversations about how we tell stories about race and policing. There's a massive responsibility for journalists who have covered these events over the past year to carefully depict what the protests were about. We are now really understanding the weight and the gravity of the things we put on air for our viewers to see and how we have to be very mindful of what we are putting out and how that comes off and what are the implications. But having broader conversations about systemic racism in our country has not come without some backlash. A lot of racists have come out and now, you know, the ones that were kind of more in the closet races before, they're now out, they're more vocal and, you know, they, they seem to be pushing towards more of the extremists side just because of the fact I think they're so upset. It's going to take all of us taking a deep look within ourselves. And so when you see the reactions, the visceral reactions, it shows me that some people are just not ready to address certain realities that I think if you were from the outside looking in would be pretty obvious. We've talked about how discussions about systemic racism have targeted policing and health policy. But the push to reckon with racism in our past, along with the COVID-19 pandemic, has put a spotlight on existing inequities across the board. From education to transportation and even access to better paying jobs. Everybody should have access to a quality education. Like that's really where it starts. Everybody should have access to quality food. You know, like it shouldn't be the HEBs on one side of town have a less variety of healthy quality food just because it's on that side of town. We are a city that in many ways embraces our diversity, even if we're um, economically unequal and that's a problem that we have. But I think that we recognize that these issues are issues that have broad meaning to, some, to a large percentage of our population. These San Antonians do not want this moment to pass without seizing the opportunity to make real change and be part of the process now and in the future. If you don't keep your eye on 
kind of the wheels of justice, then those wheels will start to reverse and go in the opposite direction. And I think it's important for people to realize that we only got these wins because of their vigilance. We have to vote even when it becomes hard, even when it's, oh, they're removing polling places so that you, you can't be here, you gotta go way over here. You gotta do it. We've seen voices that have gone unheard for so long now starting to be heard and acknowledged and valued. And I hope that's the path that we continue to follow. We're at a middle ground right now in which we can go either way.